Welcome to Forum 360. Our special guest today is Catherine Dora Garmasco, who is a specialist in helping individuals who are blind with being able to navigate the world. And there are over 12 million people who are vision impaired in the United States, over 3 million who are blind. And this is a problem that many people can't see, but folks like Kate Garmasco are working on it. And she has a Bachelor of Science in Business Administration master's in business administration, a master's degree in low vision rehabilitation. Kate has a certificate in low vision therapy and she currently works as a vision impairment services team coordinator and blind rehabilitation specialist at the Robert J. Dole Veterans Administration in Wichita, Kansas. Welcome to Forum 360, Kate. Thank you. So I understand that you got into the field helping people who are visually impaired uh, back in 2012, um, after your, your father lost vision suddenly. Could you, would you mind talking about that a little bit, about how you got into the field? Sure. My father and I had worked together for many years um, in business and healthcare consulting, and he lost his vision about 20 years ago and had been through a lot um, going with his glaucoma and his macular degeneration. Um, and it was going to the VA and getting a lot of help and pretty much as his coach and assistant, I was going with him to his appointments. And then some of the staff there suggested that I knew so much about it just based on living with him, working with him and assisting him that I start doing some contracting for the VA and get involved. So I asked some questions and said, well, okay, if I'm going to do this, I want to do it the right way and I want to get a degree. Um, so end of 2012, I applied to Salus University in Philadelphia, got accepted, started right away, and got a degree in low vision therapy. Well, a lot of people think about blindness and vision impairment as a problem that somebody else has. Right. And you have a small percentage of people that have it. But as my late husband used to say, when it may be 10% of the population, but when it's you, it's 100%. And Absolutely. I, and I understand that you also have vision issues. I mean, uh, had traumatic blood from an injury when you were very young. Am I right about that? Yes, when I was seven years old, I was rocking, walking down the roadway in my neighborhood and a rock from a lawnmower flew up and hit me in the eye um, as someone was mowing right on the edge of the road. And I have traumatic glaucoma because of that. Luckily, um, I've had some wonderful doctors uh, that have really been monitoring, but I only have a little bit of vision loss, uh, superior, you know, like above my head. You know, I can't see my hand right now where most people would be able to. Um, but other than that, I, I just have to take daily medications and keep that under control. However, macular degeneration is hereditary, so I may end up with macular degeneration just like my father. Right, and we know that there are other causes of, of vision loss, whether it's from accidents or from diabetes or from disease or whatever. But so what, what we can talk about you know, the, the problem, but what is there to help people with low vision, people who are blind? What are, what's out there to help them be able to navigate the world and be as effective as they possibly can be to help them achieve their potential? First of all, there are a lot of people that work in the field um, that specialized from birth through high school and then young adults all the way till death. Um, so, you know, over 100 years old, we have some patients over 100. Um, so we have specialists that work with each different age category to help them, whether it's learning in a school, navigating the home, uh, crossing streets, using a bus to travel, or cooking, cleaning, um, any type of education, using a computer or an iPhone, um, really just being as independent as possible. So if a, a child is born with some vision impairments, then it's really key to get someone involved right away and seeing a specialist is the key to that. So working with your eye doctors and getting a specialist involved right away, a low vision specialist who can point you to your local resources We've got to get that child um, being able to learn their environment as quickly as possible so that they can function like all other children, um, you know, and trying to adapt and overcome. In terms of older adults, which is my specialty, I work with veterans, so primarily much older adults. Um, there's a lot of technology out there, which is really amazing. Um, Head-mounted devices are 
really the big thing in blindness and low vision right now. So if you're completely blind or cannot see anything but shadows, there's some great devices out there that clip onto eyeglasses or you use as a pointer like the OrCam, and that device is gonna read to you. Uh, if you do have some vision, but it's difficult to utilize that vision, then there's devices like the Iris Vision, the Patriot Viewpoint, New Eyes, and many other devices. And they fit and sit on your head and face like uh, virtual technology headpieces do. And most of them work with um, a Samsung phone that's installed in the front of it. And it creates two photos, one in front of each eye. So it uses the camera and the phone, creates these photos and really puts the image right in front of your eye. So even if you have blind spots in your vision, it still gives you the ability to see that picture. So people that have lost a lot of color vision are able to see, they can magnify easily by voice, they can tell it to magnify or with a swipe of a finger and really get that image up close where they need it. Sort of like digital binoculars that are mounted right in front of your eyes and are hands free once they're placed upon your head. So let's back up and, and talk about some of these things. Um, but so there are devices that, that people can put on their head that will tell them what they're looking at. Is that what you're saying? So the OrCam is a device that will read to you. It will scan barcodes. It will even identify faces once that's programmed in. So for instance, people you see all the time at church or at meetings or functions, you can program it to recognize those faces. It will also read barcodes. If it's not already scanned and saved in the system, you can teach it. So if you I grab something out of your refrigerator, um, it will look at it and identify it by that barcode and tell you all about that product. I mean, uh, it sounds absolutely fabulous, but is there like, you start about teaching it, does that mean that there's a process? It's not an instantaneous thing where you put it on your head and it automatically starts telling you who you're talking to and what you, I mean, but there must be a process of, 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 of uh, training the machinery to help you. Yes. With every device, the technology is only as smart as the person that's using it in terms of we have to teach it to work the way we want it to. It will automatically start reading for you if you point to something or you tap on the side because it mounts right on the side of your glasses. It's about the size of one of those little 25 cent packs of gum and it mounts on with um, magnets and sits right here and you just tap it and whatever that camera's pointing at or if you use your finger then it will automatically read to you. In terms of some of the other features, those have to be sort of taught to the device, but it's very easy to use, easy to walk through. There's excellent instructions and trainers that will teach you how to use it, whether it's a trainer from the company that's selling you the device or it's someone from the VA or it's someone from your local uh, low vision specialty clinic. So what are some of the other products that are out there? So that's the OrCam, and OrCam makes a whole variety of products, I assume. Yes, and um, so the Iris Vision and the Patriot Viewpoint are two that we use very often. Um, oh, and what's the Patriot Viewpoint? So that is the one that it sits and it, it covers completely over your eyes and mounts with Velcro coming around with Velcro straps around your head and over your head and it has a swipe pad on the side too and it is the size in front as a Samsung phone um, because that's what's in the front of it and again that's the one that puts the, the photos right in front of your eyes and will magnify so it's like digital binoculars. Those devices also have optical character recognition that OCR component which means it will read to you. So again, there's training involved. You need to learn all the different modes and, and figure out how to use the modes for what you prefer. So both these devices will actually look at printed material and then read it to the person. Will, Absolutely. Will, will they read handwriting? They will not read handwriting at this point. There's too many variables in that. Right. Um, and you also talked about iris vision. Is that a different type of product? So Iris Vision looks very similar to the Patriot Viewpoint and works very similarly. There's just minute differences between the two devices, whether it's field of view, so how wide you can see, um, or the type of features. One of them has binocular vision in it, so it gives you two images 
top to bottom where the top is the magnified version of the bottom. Uh, that's one of the modes. Another one has an RP mode for retinitis pigmentosa. They have little magnifier bubbles. There's just little nuances and it's really a personal preference between the two devices. And um, here at the VA, we try on both and we do an assessment and let the individual choose which device they prefer. But let me give you an example of how it works. I've taken my father to the symphony before uh, when we were living in Boston. He wasn't able to see anything. He asked me to describe it to him because he wasn't able to see much more than a couple feet in front of him. He had no idea what it looked like inside, let alone he could not identify, you know, he knew where the stage was because of the sound, but he had no idea what the stage looked like or who was performing except for me telling him. When he got his iris vision from the VA in Augusta, Georgia at Blind Rehab, where he was fully trained on it, I got tickets to go to the symphony. We sat up in the corner balcony, very far away. We sat down, we went early so that he could get his headset on and adjusted because it is audio command. So we don't want that to talk during the symphony. Got it the way he wanted and he looked around and he instantly started crying. Oh. He says, I had no idea how beautiful the symphony hall is. And he starts describing to me the statues and the gold leaf and the foiled look that is the big frame that goes around the, the stage. I said, okay, can you see everyone in the orchestra? He said, yeah. I said, great, start on the right side, go left, tell me what you see. He named every single instrument across the stage. He even told me there was a, a door at the back of the stage. I didn't even see the door until I looked really hard. So this is a device that is really changing what people can see. And I have patients that come in, one of the most rewarding things I have is when we put this on a patient, hasn't seen his wife's face in years, and he starts crying and says, oh my God, I forgot how beautiful my wife is. Oh. And it's such a moment that someone who has gone with vision loss for so long can finally see their wife when normally they can see shadows and blurs and colors of gray, but they don't have that crisp image that they once had because of vision loss from different diseases. I, I, I'm glad you told me that dramatic story because the origin of doing this show started when I had the privilege of being with a group of soldiers who were just colorblind, not, not visual impaired otherwise, but colorblind. Mm -hmm. And they put on a device which helped them to see colors for the first time. And they were so emotional, just, excuse me, just in quotes, just about seeing the color purple. Uh -huh. Never seen purple before. They were crying, these grown, you know, tough, tough guys. Yeah. Never, and, now, and, and yet compared to what you're telling me with your father, what a small thing. But it was, it was such a dramatic moment for me uh, that I said, you know, we've got to do a show about this. Obviously, this is, it's incredible. Yeah. So what, what, are, what are the ways in which normally, if you're in the veterans in, a veteran, you can go to the VA and get such devices. And yes. is there a cost to a, to a veteran who needs to have these types of adaptive devices? There is no cost to the veteran as long as they qualify to be seen in our low vision clinic, which that all depends on their veteran status. Um, so as long as they're able to get veterans health care, yes, they can come in and we'll see them. There's no cost in our low vision clinic. Okay, so for normal human beings, who are not, no offense, who are not, who have not earned the right then to have, to have um, this type of care and treatment at the Veterans Administration, you have to know the costs for people who are not covered, who are not veterans, for, for let's say for the Patriot Viewpoint or Iris Vision or Arcan. Right, so the Patriot Viewpoint and the Iris Vision are very close in price, of course, because they're competing against each other. They're the two that the, are the most similar, and yeah, they're just but, under 3000 they're basically computers that you wear on your glasses. Or on your yeah, it's a smartphone. It's a smartphone that you wear that has a special software program embedded in it that overrides a lot of the different smartphone features. You can't take it out and use it like a regular phone. It's mounted in there and it has the different magnifications and color modes and contrast and all the things that we try to do in low vision is when someone can't see, let's try high contrast. Let's try... Um, magnification, let's try changing colors. All of those different things are built into this device and it's all done automatically with autofocus. So you're talking two or $3,000? Yeah, it's 
Um, the Patriot Viewpoint and the Iris Vision run around $2,990 approximately. Um, it may depend on your market. Um, but yes, it's right under 3000 The OrCam, I'm sorry. Yeah, and the OrCam, I was going to ask you about the or cam depending on what features you want so they now have a sort of carte blanche um let's we can either get all of it or we can menu the items and you know choose what we want so if you want the full package on that or cam that's going to do everything it's about thirty five hundred dollars if you want the basic reader that's just going to read to you that's nineteen hundred dollars and you can go anywhere in between depending on what features you want do you happen to know some of the resources that people may have besides the Veterans Administration for paying these devices, especially for children or for um, other folks? Yeah, so um, most states have a um, have their own program through Health and Human Services that can help they're not necessarily going to be able to provide these devices because they run on a state budget that's based off of a federal budget. Um, however, there are grants and things out there to assist also. So you can either contact these companies directly or you can go through your local um, resources. There's also companies like Envision, Nanopack. Those are great resources that um, are around different parts of the country. You can go through um, to get information on resources in your area. Vision Aware uh, is a wonderful resource, one of the best resources out there that can give you a lot of information and actually will list out by state all the different resources that are available to you by state. And, so, and, and in Akron, Ohio, there's something called the Philadelphia Society, which mm -hmm. provides great referrals for folks. Um, right, Lions Club is a wonderful resource, the National Federation of the Blind, American Con uh, Council for the Blind, the American Printing House for the Blind, and then there's different resources that offer other things. So there's Hadley Institute for the Blind that has online and mail-in classes, including Braille. There's the National Library Ser for the excuse me, National Library Service for the Blind and Print Disabled that offers free Braille and talking books library service. So there's a lot of different things out there. Always check first with your local and state commission for the blind through Health and Human Services and see what's offered. I know when I studied at South University in Philadelphia, uh, Pennsylvania has amazing resources and different grants set up for patients. So the commission for the blind there in Pennsylvania would send patients over to the Fine Bloom Institute, which is part of Salus University, and they would get devices and training. And it depends on what you want. If you're a student or you're trying to work, you've got a lot more resources than someone that's 65. Um, unfortunately, you know, that's the way it is, but it, fortunate at the same time that we are devoting our resources to students and those that are still wanting to work and um, earn money and take care of themselves and their family. So, well, we, we've talked about the technical devices that are available for people. Are th are there types of counseling or other services that you recommend to help people to be able to adapt to using these technical devices? Absolutely, and that is such an important component. So, here at the VA, that is part of. Our program, uh, we don't just give adaptive devices and training, we counsel our patients. We want to make sure that they are accepting of their low vision or blindness and that they have all the resources available to them and to their family to understand what has happened. And um, also understanding some of the things that go with low vision and blindness like Charles Bonnet syndrome, which is a whole other topic, but basically. What is Charles Bonnet syndrome? Charles Bonnet syndrome is visual hallucinations based on your brain and your optic nerve and your eye trying to create images that are not there because it can't see. So uh, people that have visual hallucinations, it's visual hallucinations only due to low vision if they have anything that they can uh, feel or smell or touch or hear that's completely different, but visual hallucinations are very common. Um, so we wanna make people understand so they don't think they're going crazy when they're losing their vision because they're seeing things. Um, also, again, your local and state commission for the blind health and human resources, uh, going through Vision Aware, there's a lot of information for yourself and for your family and pamphlets you can print out. 
but they also have support groups in your areas. The Commission for the Blind and state in different states also have those support groups. And that's something that's very important at the VA. We have support groups, um, we have individualized counseling, and when you go to a blind rehab center inpatient, um, we have social services there to assist you also. What, what are some of the other, are, so, are there, is there software available or special phone apps to help people that are visually impaired or have low vision? Absolutely. So computers, there's a lot of different software now, um, and phones, the same thing. So when you're talking about technology, iPhones have the Siri and VoiceOver, which are amazing. VoiceOver does take some training because there's certain gestures and hand movements that you have to use. But Siri, you simply talk to. So it's an easy way to make phone calls and get information off the internet. Um, Samsung and, and Android type phones have Hey Google, another wonderful thing, the Alexa system that a lot of people have in their homes. Siri? Yeah, Siri, Hey Google, Alexa, those are great ways to get information without having to go onto a computer and internet. Um, most computers nowadays have built-in assistive technology, so whenever you go to the settings section of your computer and you go under display or assistive um, technology or um, accessibility, I'm sorry, accessibility is usually what is listed under. You can change the font size, so the size of your text, the size of your cursor. You can change the contrast and the color and a lot of different features. You can also have your computers talk to you. So an <laughs> iPad, an Apple, an iPhone, those all work with that Siri and voiceover type technology. So you can change the entire appearance of the text on the screen? Absolutely. Change the appearance of it, change the size and color of the cursor. You can even put a big circle or bullseye around the cursor. And then there's different software products like Zoom Text, Guide Connect, JAWS, that will make your computer talk to you. So whenever you hover over something with the cursor, it'll tell you what it is. So there's computers and software that make it accessible for anybody at any age to use a computer with complete blindness, which is what we call no light perception, or visual impairments. Okay, what, what's been the most rewarding part uh, for you personally for being involved in this field? Well, for me, it's been able to, for me, really, just helping my father. Um, he's, you know, if you listen to a lot of people that have been diagnosed with uh, blindness or low vision, especially sudden blindness or low vision, you hear about Great Depression. You hear about um, patients talking about wanting to commit suicide. And I have had several patients, and I'll tell my father's story. Uh, my father actually planned his suicide. I didn't know it for a long time, but he planned his suicide. He planned his last meal. And then he saw on the news, he was down in Phoenix, Arizona, where someone was at a hockey game with their children and a hockey puck came over and hit him uh, right between the eyes and severed his optic nerve and he lost his vision instantly with no ability to regain it. Mm. And that attorney was interviewed later and said, I still have my whole life ahead of me. I have my beautiful children. I'll learn to adapt. And my father said to himself, God put me here for a reason and I'm going to adapt and I'm going to help other people. I think my job is to learn and to counsel others now. And he's done quite a bit of that. So that's really his story. And that's what I try to help other people with. So really learning to get the skills to adapt and also helping get them the funding or grants that they may need. So through the VA, there's a lot of different programs we can do to help them get assistance financially, um, depending on if it's a service connection or if it's um, they're very low income. There's different pro programs we can do, so I do that. But really it's- You're helping people that are not just veterans. I mean, not just veterans, but you help people. Yes. Veterans. Yes. So um, my father is, has spent a lot of time talking to other people. But even when you help a veteran, you know, for me, that's what I do when I'm, um, but they reach out to other family members and friends and they say, you know, I talked to so-and-so at my church or I talked to so-and-so, my neighbor, yes, and yes. they had no idea this stuff existed. Can you Meg, give me more information? Meg, what advice do you have for children who might want to get interested in doing the type of work you're doing or who might be low vision themselves and you need assistance. So if they're low vision themselves, then um, 
you know, the family members, the parents really need to work with their commission for the blind, their health and human services, reach out to a low vision specialist and get them help right away. The sooner, the better. You um, really need to start helping them, whether it's learning Braille or learning the computer technology or figuring out how to navigate their own play space and educational areas. It's really important to start. And while technology is super important part of today, um, Technology is great, but it's not going to pour you a glass of water. It's not going to help you with your hygiene. It's not going to help you navigate your household or cook a meal or clean up your house. Um, so, uh, the reality of life. The, exactly. So we have to start with the basics. That's the most important thing. Starting, starting with the basics. On behalf of Forum 360, I want to thank Catherine Burke, to Osco, our very special guest from the Veterans Administration, and who in Wichita, Kansas, who is an expert on helping people who are blind, who have low vision, and uh, has been working to help our veterans to be able to navigate the world and also go and counsel others. On behalf of Forum 360, I'm Sally Henry. Forum 360 is brought to you by John S. and James L. Knight Foundation, the Akron Community Foundation, Hudson Community Television, the Rubber City Radio Group, Shaw Jewish Community Center of Akron, Blue Green, Electric Impulse Communications, and Forum 360 supporters.